Now, I wonder if anyone can guess what this plant is. I mean, the Latin name is there, but Cynara scolimus. This is uh, artichoke. Let's go one more, David. Yeah, you recognize that, maybe. How many of you have eaten globe artichoke? Yeah. yeah. So, not my favorite, not a lot of people's favorites, because it's bitter. And that bitterness is the medicine. And the closer you get to the choke, the more bitter it is. So what you're actually eating, technically, botanically, is the bracts that wrap around the unopened flower. So let's go one more, David. Yeah, so there it is beginning to open. So you, that's gone too far for eating. Now it'll all just be tough and stringy. But if you get that unopened, effectively a flower bud is what you're eating. And it's in the thistle family, the daisy family. You probably guessed that. Um, when you, when you um, take off those bracts and eat the fleshy part, and it is slightly bitter, you know how it's usually served as an appetizer? You're more likely to get your globe artichoke as a standalone dish, as an appetizer section of the menu, than you would have it as a side vegetable with your main meal. The reason for that is that when you eat bitter foods, they stimulate your whole digestive system. And they prep your digestive system for the coming food. So taking a bitter as an appetizer, taking a bitter food as an appetizer, is a good way to prime the digestive system ready to receive the rest of the food and digest it better. So you taste bitterness in the mouth, and it stimulates every aspect of your digestive system. So, um, stomach acid production, the swallowing reflex, the peristalsis, the movement on through the system of foods, the, uh, the liver, the gallbladder, the pancreas, everything gets kind of woken up by bitter foods. And we used to eat bitters in our diet. In fact, most of our leafy greens were very bitter originally, and we've gone through all the selective breeding to get rid of the bitterness because we don't like bitter. You know, we love sugar. We like salt, and sour is okay, especially if it's sweet and sour. But bitter, I mean, very few people, apart from some crazy herbalists, go out and choose to eat bitter foods on a regular basis. But an awful lot of people choose to take bitters without appreciating what they're doing. They'll drink a beer. Beer is made from hops. Hops are quite bitter. In fact, if you travel in Britain, you go to the pub, you order a pint of bitter. That's what beer is called. The dark beer is called bitter. And it's not usual to drink your beer after the meal. Traditionally, you would drink it before the meal. You might have Campari or a gin and tonic or a martini. Those are pre-dinner drinks, sort of in traditional use. And that's because they're all bitter. And as you're sipping on them, your digestive system is waking up and saying, oh, now I'm ready for the big meal. And I'm able to digest it better because of that. So we tend to have bitters before meals. And then those aromatic herbs after the meal for that carminative action to get all the contractions moving smoothly. So you might have after your meal, you might have some of the sweet liqueurs, chartreuse, benedictine, stuff like that, which are full of aromatic herbs the carminative herbs. Or if you go to an Indian restaurant, you get little fennel seeds at the end of the meal, or you might drink chai, or even in the ice cream, they put cardamom, and that's all the carminative action at the end of a meal. So back to the, the um, artichoke for a moment. One more picture, David. Yeah, here's a close-up. We rarely see it like this because we pick them before they're mature. We don't let them go to flower, but it is quite beautiful. I grow it an ornamental variety in the garden at the back of the herbaceous border because it gets to about six foot high and has a lot of these big, beautiful... Um, that flower head is as big as a saucer, and it's quite impressive. As a medicine, yes, you can eat it, um, but eat, eating that immature flower. But as a medicine, it tends to get processed from the leaf. The leaf is the most medicinal part. So that isn't necessarily something you're going to eat in your, in your home, but it is in the, in the world of herbal practice. We use extracts of artichoke leaf for um, the main use is to stimulate the liver to clear cholesterol. 
and it actually helps to drop your, your LDL and raise your HDL. So artichoke leaf extract is a phenomenal remedy for high cholesterol. And it not only brings down the bad stuff, but it actually brings up your good fats. So it changes the metabolism in the liver. It changes the way the liver makes and processes the, um, the cholesterol. So it's a really useful remedy. I certainly use it a lot in the clinic. Um, and I do encourage people to eat the vegetable, but again, you're not, probably not going to get a therapeutic dose on a daily basis in that form. So that's where the extracts are useful. Okay, I have one more um, Western herb, and then we're going to jump continents. So let's have one more picture. <laughs> 